All right. I hope this is working. I haven't done this in a minute, so I'm just checking. All right, I think so. Well, welcome, everybody. It's been a few days, a few weeks, actually. I've been on vacation. And oh, what a good vacation it's been. But now I'm um, working on some art. So um, I've been back from vacation for actually a couple days now, just kicking it with some really easy tasks get myself back in the flow of this game. Um, actually, one of the tasks wasn't as easy, but it turned out to be really cool, was to um, make it so it can run full screen windowed on Mac. And that's that's awesome. So you're looking at the debug mode, debug version of the game. I can actually alt tab out and actually get to you know other apps. And the game is running in full screen here the whole time. So it's pretty cool. I think I'm gonna leave it like this for now. See if uh, Open Broadcaster can run well with like it, with it like this. So um, the other thing I've been working on the past couple days um, this weekend is just to um, work on the art for the overworld. So you can see that the rocks for all these mountains and stuff are really been refined a lot. So I've added a lot of different kinds of rocks that can be put into there so that they look like they blend a little bit better. And also they have all these different kinds of plants that can go on them. I'm running around in an invincible mode, so that's why it's so I'm not being affected by enemies or anything right now. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to keep on working on this art. The next thing I'm working on right here are these little um, bits of rocks, like right here. I'm working on these bits of rubble. They're going to go on the ground. Yo, what's up, people? What's up, Ethan and Marza? Howdy, guys. What's up? Yeah, so that's what I worked on the last couple of days, and now that's what I'm working on now. So I'm going to keep on working on this stuff and draw these um, little bits of rubble. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. How did how'd it go? How'd it go playing the, the alpha version? What's up, JFK? Cool. Um, anything notable I should know of right now, or is it something maybe... It's better to put in an email. That's good. I know there's going to be tons of bugs. There's so many bugs I haven't even gotten to on my own list here. And I'm sure there'll be tons more. So in the meantime, I'm just going to keep on working on these bits of rock here. I want this to be a little flatter. Yeah, Ethan, uh, it's not, it hasn't been sent out to the press this time. It's only for people that are, that are Kickstarter backers. So, yeah, next time I do a press push, there'll be more gameplay videos. <clears throat> Let me make sure that's exporting. Yeah, all user slices. Cool. Let's see how that looks. Okay, so now we got a little, a little bit like, dang, I should be able to step on top of them. <clears throat> nice, good for you, Ethan. So if I were to just step on top of these, I would need to use like a a negative Z and would also have to be a child of the area layer. <laughs> You're missing out on the lag. I bet that was nice. Hmm. I guess I could set the render dot sprite. This is a kind of a crazy experiment here, but I could set the render sprite for the bottom mountain 
any mountain that's on the bottom to negative, I'll put it below the player's feet. Cool. What's that? What's Nico Dancer? Uh, crazy lag. So if this works, then I'll be able to stand in front of these bottom. Okay, so it definitely me it messed up this one right here. Because it has one on top of it. All right. Wow. Dang, that's some crazy lag. All right, I don't know what to do right now about that Z-ordering, so I'm just gonna draw the tiles, and I'll figure out the Z-ordering later. Especially on the left and the right, there'll be different tiles anyways. Thanks, Marza. Yeah, I hope you're catching the words I'm trying to say. But yeah, welcome back. Thank you for saying welcome back, and it's nice to be back. All right, cool, man. All right, so now I'm going to draw some sideways sprites. In fact, I think I'll do three of each kind of rubble rock. So I'm going to add some more sprite frames for rubble. programmed in some more shortcuts for making layers and it's really helped me my workflow here in Photoshop so I just added two more layers and then I have a shortcut which um, turns it into a layer based slice and then I can also hide or show um, slices Baby? Hey, I'm streaming. Oh, okay. All right. Okay, love you, baby. So I just made a frame four and five here. So I've got more, I've got up to six different frames I can do for these rebels, rebel sprites. Ethan, um, I just learned by getting a, a bamboo tablet. I have a Wacom bamboo tablet. It's just a basically any kind of graphics tablet. And then I started watching art on YouTube. So I watched other people do it. Some live speed art and all that. Okay, now the third, the three frames on the right are, yeah, these three ones over here, these are going to be uh, sideways, like they connect to the side of a rock. Um, 
Uh, that's obviously way too big. Let's make this a little smaller. Ah. It's going to look something like this for this sideways. Rock. Now, to give it... A little shading. All right, now we've got those exported. I can go and use one of them. All right. <clears throat> so we're gonna have to do a type of rubble tile based on what frame, what, what compass direction the current mountain rock is so if a compass direction is like west or east then we can do these sideways style tiles so I think we already have a type variable um, so if frame equals k der west or frame equals k der east then we can do one of these so we'll set frame to negative one to start and then so if it's west or east we can do um, wait we have a flipped flipped is started at false so wait, t is going to be 0 1 2 3 and flipped equals frame equals east Otherwise, frame is going to be zero, flipped, I don't know. So yeah, we got T now. And frame, flipped, I think that's this one there. Okay, so really all I'm trying to do is do these sideways, east and west. All right, Ethan, see you, man. Uh. All right, there's nothing that flips that, so we got to get the sprite and then flip it.
Yeah, nice. We got one some right here. These west tiles. So I'm gonna start with just the west and east tiles. Just get a look for for them. Make sure they're flipping on the west and the east, right? And their positions are all right. What the heck happened there? I'm wondering why some of these tiles. Oh, it's like missing its bottom one. Hmm. Here's a couple. I want to see some to the right as well. And there's always some trees. Uh, this one little tile right here is revealing that well, I guess that works. The tablet stopped working. Here is a perfect example of a place where there should be some of these. So let's remove the random factor so we can just see it on the first screen here. So if anybody's just tuning in, what I'm doing is I'm adding some rubble to the sides of these mountains to make it look a little smoother from the transition from from mountain into dirt. So we've got a few different bits of rubble right there on these. I'm working on just the east and the west ones. These west facing ones are working and then these east facing ones are not, which is kind of weird. I wonder if that has something to do with the stairs distance. doesn't. That's crazy. Brad! What's up? What's up, Brad? 
Man, how you been? Nice. I know. I need a frame, too. Mine keeps falling off the wall. It's freaking hot here. I heard, were, I heard you guys were having floods again. <clears throat> so what could be causing this to not do those... Bits of rubble on the right. Uh, hell, let's do it on every single one. Oh, cool, man. Yeah, my vacation was awesome. Oh, so, so needed. Um, kind of sucked because we got all the way up to, to Canada. And, um, you know, it was a great trip. All of it was awesome, but it was really smoky up there. There's tons of fires in BC, so it was all just like, I don't know, it was like apocalyptic for a while. Nice, your work, right on. Cool, man. I'll know if you need to hit the big red button. Momir, what's up? What's up, you guys? Um, Sorry if I'm kind of slow today. I'm basically getting back in the saddle last couple days and um yeah my brain is just slowly getting back into the whole game development <clears throat> yes it did it did canada was quite chaotic it was fun though you know i the, the reason i'm kind of bummed out is because i normally go i climb a mountain every time i'm in canada and it's just such a beautiful place to climb mountains and so I really couldn't climb a mountain this time, so that kind of made me sad. But oh well. Right? So yeah, I'm just kind of working on some art. Um, I really like would love to get to um, make some lily pad. Like some like cattails coming off of the lily pads and stuff like that. So I, I'm thinking that the east is just invisible. Yeah, see, because I flipped it. Uh, I didn't add enough right there. Uh, there were some BC, there was fires up in BC, but near Vancouver, basically. They were crazy bad. It was last week. Um, or the week before. Yeah, two weeks ago. Yeah. But it was a great trip overall. I got to see some great friends. We had a good time everywhere we went. Stayed in lots of different places. Saw lots of people. Very refreshing. Just the polar bears are fighting back. They can't catch enough narwhals. App code? What's that? I haven't heard of app code. That's not the Microsoft one, is it? What's up, T? Oh, JetBrains, yeah. Yeah, I'm not... I, I, I've i tried JetBrains products in the past. I'm just not as much of a, a fan of JetBrains myself. And um, the other thing is... I kind of believe once you're kind of used to one thing, you know, it takes a while to learn new things. So I don't, I don't try and switch my software too often. But thanks for the suggestion. And if it was working great for you, that's awesome. Yeah, actually, Momir, my hand is is a lot better. I think I could probably do, like, I could play guitar again and and do yoga. But I'm just like letting it rest a little bit longer. Hi, Karma. What's up? Yay! Ah, okay. Good to know, good to know. Alright, so for flipped... I think it needs to be something like 8 or something. Negative 4. Negative 4. 
Oh, it was just just some um, tendonitis. I think I, I was typing too much, you know, last year. I've had this for a long time. So if like, I had it since last September, I've had this tendonitis issue. And um, it's finally getting better. So that's it's freaking awesome. I can go climb trees again and do crazy stuff. Yeah, I've heard great things about JetBrains from the web development languages and stuff. <clears throat> okay, yeah, yeah. I just took a I took a two week break, so um, it was our our summer break. My girl and I went all the way on this great road trip. We went all the way to Canada. I live in California, so it was quite a long journey. We spent a you know we did so many hikes. We swam in so many rivers and lakes. It was awesome. Yeah, I know. It's so easy to get tendonitis, right? When you type all the time. Uh, yeah, so I'm just making art today. I'm working on some rubble that goes around the sides of the mountains right now. You can see I'm just throwing it off on every single rock right now. And the Z-ordering is not quite working right, but... So that 20... Need to be a little farther. And then this negative 4 needs to be more like negative 8. Let's try this 28 and negative 8. Oh my gosh, it's really hot, yeah. I heard it, it's been hot all over the place, but yeah, the whole west coast of North America is really hot and really dry because we've had no rain. Yeah, we basically didn't. Yeah. At least not, the, not to my knowledge. I was gone for a little while, so I've, I didn't watch the weather in California, but at least all in, um, all the way up in BC, it's still dry, like... BC, Washington, Oregon, all these states are super duper drought. Like, I've lived in Oregon my whole life growing up, and we never had, I don't remember having any droughts. And this year there's signs all over my hometown like, whoa, we're in a drought, save water, don't be an idiot, you know? Don't be an idiot, save water. <laughs> All right, cool. This is kind of working. All right, so now we can switch it back so it's doing both um, kinds of frames. So there's a west frame and the east frame. And then, yeah, once I got this code dialed in, I can go and draw a few more rocks and make this look better. Cool. Okay, so these are sticking out a little bit too much there. Do 24, negative 4. All right, let's draw some more frames. Whoa. Crazy. Ah, oh, I totally envy you guys with the heavy rain. It must have been annoying, but man, North America needs some rain right now. What I read was that basically there's some, some storm systems or whatever that are being blocked. There's some kind of long-term 
earth weather pattern going on right now, which is blocking the winter storms from hitting us really hard in the whole west coast of North America. So that's why we're so dry right now. We need those. We need the earth to get its get its act together. Please, yes. Send me a jar of water. Oh, if only I had a jar of water. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna switch. I'm gonna swap these right now. I didn't really like this rock. Just put it up here. This rock's cool. All right, now let's draw some more. It's just like little bits of rubble. All right, let's see these are looking. So I think this should be, yeah, like that. Oh yeah. Oh, these need some shading. So I'm gonna take this color, make it pretty dark. Nah, I'm just gonna take this, yeah, this dark color here. Make sure I'm drawing with 20% opacity and just draw in some shade. Shade. All right, there we go. Cool. Let's see what that looks like. Some more kinds of rubble. Yeah, I haven't got any bug reports yet from alpha testers, which is nice. You know, of course, to not have to to think there's no bugs or anything. But um, yeah, I'm sure there's tons of bugs. I'd love to get a list made. I've already got a a long, long list of you know bugs and stuff to do. But uh, yeah, I'll just keep on. I'll keep on adding more as I get start getting some feedback. I figured most people knew. Most it's been it's gone out to a very small group of people. So um, and these are all backers, you know, backers at a pretty high level. So um, I wasn't really expecting to get tons of feedback, and that's awesome. Uh, but yeah, and I I'm pretty sure that most people knew I was going to be on vacation. So I've kind of. I guess I'm expecting to kind of get a little bit more communication from people regarding that now that I'm back. So we'll see. Or maybe I just did it wrong, you know, and I it was bad timing to release an alpha version and then go on vacation. So maybe I'll get better feedback the next time there's an alpha release. I don't know. So the frame is going to be our mod for now. And this can be R2, less than 128. Oops, okay, so not four, but three.
Yeah, 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 yeah. That's totally it. Just want to see some rubble on the ground. Sweet. It's looking pretty good. That one big piece of rubble is not as visually cool as I imagined. So I'm probably going to shorten these big old chunks right here. And I really like the smaller rubbles, so I'll probably do more of those. And then I want the ones that are the south, like south, southwest, southeast, those ones to be offset a little on the Y. So if frame equals K through south or southeast or whatever. South, southwest, southeast. Then we're going to subtract some y, so minus equals 4, start with 4. And then the other thought was to make these this big one smaller, more broken up. I love these broken up ones. trying to use my tablet more delicately because it's just it, it's I need to get a new one all right So let's actually move this last one all the way to the end. I'm not sure if I'm actually going to even use that. I like these small bits of rubble. Now I'm going to draw just like some single ones. All right, now we can increase this R, four, five, two more. Okay. So obviously I don't want to do it on every single one of these frames. I am curious why it's not putting them on these bottom ones here. Or maybe it is. I just can't see it. Let's turn on debug for a second. Oh yeah, it is. Oh, right, right, right. Okay, so the...
basically we want to only do it when it's east, west, or south. All right, okay, we'll start with south. Grabs a certain frame and it makes sure to do, add some or subtract some from the, the Y, okay, now west. Actually, we're just going to do south. We're going to do west or southwest. Maybe northwest. This one is not flipped. And then we'll do east as well. So yeah, now we got it. Now it's a little smarter. And we can put some more restrictions on these too. There, and it's not going to draw it if it doesn't have those. So the next thing you do is test for um, the existence of no tile. So if we got frame south and the tile below it. none and then we're doing west and tile to the left east and the tile to the right All right, south o dot x half a tile.
Hmm. Why was I not getting the south east? Oh. Yeah, it's weird. I don't know why I'm not getting southeast. Oh, these are minus one. Both these. So I'm going to separate out these into different ones because each one that needs to kind of be custom. So there'll be a south one, there'll be a west pacific one. What's up Ziri? Yeah, it's a little bit quiet. Well, this is the first day I'm streaming in two weeks. So, you know, there's a lot of momentum lost as far as people's, you know, interest and things like that. So. Yeah, it'll take a minute to get it all built back up. All right, so west. And just straight up east. Well, west is like that. East is like that. Oh, I've been on vacation, yep. Yep, I've been on an awesome vacation. This is summer vacation for me and my girl. We went for two weeks. Um, yeah, it was a great, great time. We went all the way to Canada. Saw a lot of family, a lot of friends. Had a great time. <laughs> That's right. I was burning forests down. I lit BC on fire. No, actually, I did learn while I was there that something like... Um, 60% of forest fires or something like that are man-made. You know, somebody's putting out their cigarette or whatever, or throwing their cigarette out the window. That's what lights all these forest fires and causes all this, you know, causes the whole country to go into panic, basically. Not panic, but, you know, it's a time of crisis. Having to fight forest fires and all that. All right. <clears throat> nice, World of Tanks, right on. Okay, let's get a Southwest and a Southeast tile. Southwest is going to be one. Both of these are minus one. O dot Y. Let's see if that goes. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah. I was kind of bummed. I was really looking forward to climbing a mountain while I was there. And in fact, I was going to, this one called Wedgemont in Whistler 
looks really good. Or Mount Wedge. Mount Wedge, that's what it was called. All right, those southwest ones need to be tucked in a lot more. So we're talking like X, nothing, Y, nothing, actually. All right, so the X needs to come in even further. For southwest, so this is going to be, I was negative four, I'll just do three. That's not bad, cool. Nice, let's get this southeast looking good. In the south, this needs to be tucked up more. go <clears throat> what cool nice whoa they even speak Nepalese there. So cool. Nice, you're home, Alp. Sweet. That's so great. I wonder what my home Alp is. <laughs> In the Bay Area, Oakland, what's like the nearest big mountain? I guess the Sierra Nevadas would be the closest thing. All right, cool. Now we got some some rocks here in the corners too. In fact, that might have done it. Okay, why isn't it putting? Oh, because it's just near stairs. Oh, we don't need to worry about stairs distance. Let's, let's get rid of that. Well, yeah, let's get rid of that. We should be able to put rubble near stairs. Looks like it might have put some rubble underneath that. So there, yeah. We don't want to conceal the fact that this is a hidden secret right here. We don't want that to look like it's not a hidden secret because it's got a rock on it. So yeah, this is good. Let's turn the debug off. Let's see how it looks. There we go. Now we now everything has this rubble, every single one of them. So it's a little bit too much. Turn that down. And I want to turn down the rocks too. Oh, totally right. What is my home out? I guess you know what. Mount Shasta is really close. And it's really epic. This is kind of my home out. It's close to my hometown or my home of Oregon. So yeah, Mount Shasta, it's pretty rad. And we went hiking near here twice on our trip. It's a really, really cool mountain. 
Yeah, and this year it's probably going to be dry enough in the next month or two. It'll probably not have any snow in the next month. So I could climb to the top of it this year. I might actually do that. I'll have to rent a car and just like acclimatize, make sure I acclimatize. I think I'm pretty sure Mount Shasta is above 10,000. Yeah, it's 14,000 feet. It's so tall. Yeah, so this is like you definitely have to acclimatize to get up to the top of this one. It's a pretty rad mountain though. I've always wanted to climb all the way to the top of it. All right, here's the rocks. Let's do less of them to start with. And then the other rocks, these rubble rocks, these need to be every, I guess we could start with R2s less than 85 is, it would be a third. Every third mountain thing has some rubble. Might wanna increase that to like a half or something, I'm not sure. All right, yeah, I definitely would like there to be more. Yeah, just just having a few of them out there is really nice. And the rock shards are, I see what's wrong with the rocks. Yeah, totally, yep. We had a great trip. It's really fun. I mean, it was the longest vacation my girlfriend had ever taken. She'd never taken more than a week before, and so that was pretty neat just like just to do that. Yeah, all these rocks, they're looking a bit like too too much contrast. Check this out. Oh, no, no. Yeah, my girlfriend doesn't really climb mountains. Yeah. She's good at shopping for shoes, though. She's amazing at shopping for shoes. That's like her thing. So this top is... 57% brightness, this top is 47% brightness, this seems to be a lot brighter. What? For Mount Shasta? That's so crazy. Yeah, extreme shopping. Yeah, we should get her like rock climbing and shopping for shoes at the same time. I bet she could do it. Yeah, she's she's interested in rock climbing, but not not as much like the whole mountain climbing. So let's do a lightness of ten. See if this gets to fifty seven. This is fifty two. A little more. That's too much. That's good. There. Well, that, that might work just to put a little more brightness in each one of these rocks to make it look more like the other rocks. Let's start by exporting this rock. This is rock two. to see how that looks compared to the others <laughs> yes she would 
Momir, dang. You know, man, she would. She would definitely climb to the top. If there was a shoe store up there. Some rare shoe store that can only be shopped at if you climb this mountain. There's no other way to get to it. No gondola. All right, now I just gotta find one of the, oh yeah, here's one. Wait, no, that's not one of them. Where is that guy? I don't know. Let's do them all. Export. All right, I did this one. All right, now let's just hope they look a little more. They blend better, you know? Blend with the dirt and the other rocks a little better. Yeah, kind of. Looks kind of weird there. Maybe a little too bright there. Oh, these have the right colors applied to them. These should be color. Ah, here it is. Yeah, we don't want this value amped up right here. We just want the saturation. Probably don't even want to mess with the saturation. Let's leave the saturation alone for a sec. That's a bit dark, so we'll do half saturation. Yeah, that's looking a lot better. Now these rocks that are on the ground, they're looking a lot more just more appropriate, more, I don't know. This is kind of bugging me out. I'm not sure what it is, but it looks like uh, there's one rock tile, which is invisible. Let's figure out why. What rock tile would that be right there? Man.
I'm curious as which I'm curious about there's these certain mountain Ah, we'll figure it out by looking at Sprites, Mountain. Okay, there's these extra frames here. Overworld, 62. Okay, maybe that's why. 64, 66, 70, 72. There's tons of these. Why are they all based? Ah, oh, see, and it's all based on that frame right there. Overworld 72. Hmm. Maybe it keeps changing them. What's up, Felix? What's up, man? Hello. Thanks for saying welcome back. Okay, is so this one? Needs to be mountain three zero. I think I finally found I found the bug. Found what's wrong with both those issues. It's exporting the wrong sprite frame for that bottom one right there. Come back. Come on, tablet. Oh. All right, so I can remove these. Frames I don't want. I should be able to re export, and there should be no extraneous sprite frames. Let's check. Get status. Wow, oh, it still did some overworld. One, five, twelve. Did I export this right? Oh, it's because it did all slices. Alright, let's remove the files again. I don't know why this always turns itself off. It should always be defaulted to all user slices. Not all slices. Okay, cool. There we go. There, so that should fix both those bugs. Let's see. All right, cool. There it is. There's this. This frame is now correct. Yay. And the rocks on the ground look like they're, like they're really blending a lot better. And we've got a little bit of rubble coming off the sides of the mountains. I think we could add a little more rubble, actually. There's, it could be just a little more. Just put the increase the rubble factor. We've got 85. Let's do 128, a whole 50%. So every every other, approximately every other rock will have some rubble next to it. Yeah, that looks pretty good. It's not quite 50% because of other, I'm sure because there's other factors and stuff. But that's looking good. I'm liking this a lot. In fact, I'm ready to check this in. This is looking, this is at a good point. All this code has turned out pretty well. I can stand on top of them. The z-ordering is good. All right. <clears throat> yeah, Asnerus, it has. It has. What's up, man? All right, let's ready, to, let's ready to check in. So I'm gonna make one little check in here so that 
on uh, what's this 30, 67, 30, 73. All right, so I'm going to try and figure out why it's doing that. It was exporting those extra frames. And maybe it might have been when I did the uh, all slices. Yeah, I did. I heard news from the Retro VGS guys. It's it's going to be one of their launch titles. So that's awesome, right? Yeah, so when you, when, um, actually, yeah, any news like, yo, we launched or whatever? I don't think so. They're super busy guys. I mean, they have a small team. They need a bigger team for sure. Their Facebook page is the place to go for from the you know the newest info. All right, there you go. It looks like they're shooting their video for their. Kickstarter, so there's, yeah, it looks like they're gonna, you know, their their plan was to do their Kickstarter sometime like the end of the summer. So it looks like they're getting things together for their Kickstarter video. That's pretty cool. That's awesome. Yeah, so Retro VGS, really really excited about that. Songbringer is gonna be one of the um, one of the games you can choose. So when their when their Kickstarter comes out for Retro VGS, um, and if anyone doesn't know what Retro VGS is, it's like a new cartridge-based system for playing new games. So it's a new system coming out. Game developers are going to have to write games for this, you know, new games for this, but it's all retro. It's, it's dedicated to retro games. There's never any updating of your games. So, like, it's actually a cartridge, plugs in. The cartridge has no way to con talk to the Internet, so the system never updates itself, and there's only going to be one retro VGS. So, like, there's never going to be a retro VGS 2, 3, 4, 5, or whatever. So it's basically bringing back the old days of how games used to be with cartridges and creating new games that work on cartridges. So Songbringer is going to be one of those you can choose from when you actually order, when you pre-order a copy of Retro VGS or a Retro VGS console on their Kickstarter, you can get to choose like a couple different games to go with it. And um, Songbringer is going to be one of those choices you'll have. So you can choose like, oh, okay, I want a Retro VGS console and... I want it to be gold, and I want Songbringer, and I want Tiny Knight, or whatever. So, yeah, that's really, really exciting. So, it's going to be a lot of work, but it's also very, very exciting. Yep, it's still at another one. 30, 67... No, Pillowy Geek, yeah, they're new games, entirely new games. They're not actual retro games, like, you know, they're not going to be bringing back Mario or whatever for this. It's, there's been other game system, other consoles that their whole goal was to do that. Their whole goal was to play old games. But no, this is actually new games, just a kind of old school system. So that's what makes it so exciting. And you can check out more about it at RetroVGS.com if I'm not doing a very good job of explaining it. You know, this should do a lot but a lot better job if you read the fact. So there's a fact that kind of explains it all, how much it costs, what kind of games it's going to have and all that. So All right, so let's see if this worked. Just trying to weed out this one last sprite, which keeps coming back. Hey, what's up, Wolski? What's up? All right, it keeps coming back. What is it? It's called Mountain Thirty Dash Sixty Seven. There might be one. There might be another. 
sprite frame. No, it's totally blank. Weird. Oh, that's what it is. There's two 30s. This one is 36. This one's supposed to be 37. Okay, let's remove that one more time. Re-export it. And there shouldn't be... Ah, oh, okay, there's a mount 37, that's fine. The game's going great! Yeah, I know, the Jewel series, right? Yeah, I know, I would love to get a gold one myself, that's pretty cool. Yeah, the game's going so good, Wolfski. I've been working on art the last couple days, just working on the overworld art, check us out. The game's looking a lot better. The overworld's looking a lot more. The, the perspective angle is a lot better. I've actually, you know, I realized that a lot of the art was kind of too 2D in a sense. Things didn't really have that thickness to them. So adding like all this art for um, mountains has really given the game a lot more depth visually. I might have a bit too many plants right now on all the mountains but it's fun seeing the world just full of life so I think what I'll work on next is the lily pads I want some I want some lotus flowers popping off the lily pads and I want the lily pads to have some like cattails that are animated and then to put some frogs on them as well so yeah, I'm really, really happy with how the art's kind of turning out now. Why do I do, why do I use Mac? Um, I definitely prefer Mac over, um, over Windows myself. I've used Windows for 10 years of my game development career, and now I've used Mac for about 10 years. And I switched because I learned Unix, I, I learned computers on Windows and DOS actually and then um, so I was used to it but then when I finally found the Unix based operating systems I you know I installed Linux and all that I'm like I never ever want to use Windows again it's just the operating system of Windows in my opinion is not very well written Unix is incredibly well written in how it every little bit of Unix is a tiny little application you can combine things so well you're command line applications what you can run in a Unix system is so powerful so much more powerful than like than Windows so I use Macs because they have a Unix based you know operating system as FreeBSD they're based on sweet thanks Bifata okay so I'm gonna check that in that, that was pretty good I liked all these little rubble rocks and all that. So I can add these sprite frames I've just drawn. And that one I fixed there. And check in the code. This is the code for rubble mainly. It's looking pretty good. I'm just checking it all over to make sure I didn't do anything. I'm not checking in anything stupid. Because, you know, this is like checking your git difference is like keeps you sane as a programmer. That's all good. So I'm going to call that rubble. Hello, what's up, Nell Jones? Howdy, man. All right, yeah. Let's draw some, some lily pad stuff. I got some grass already drawn for mountains and stuff like that, so it should be pretty easy to add 
some stuff for the overworld. All right. Let's draw a lotus flower. And I wish my my pad was working. Let's see if we get it to work. It's a constant problem I have <laughs> getting my keeping my bamboo tablet working because this thing is like messed up. The cord is super messed up. Well, it might work. Oh yeah, it's look it's working again. Cool. Yeah, yeah, Azenris, um, jib is red because I'm in permadeath mode. Yeah, so whenever you're in permadeath mode, jib will look different. Um, but I'm probably going to do some custom graphics for him eventually. So right now, right now it just tints his bright red a little bit. It's more pink, actually. And then also if I die, oh, I can't die because I'm in invincible mode. Yeah, so if I die, I'm, die, I'm dead forever. Oh, I forgot about that. That's something I'm working on. Creating like this additive glow, so when you're in when you're in psychedelic mode, and a little for a little bit afterwards, it keeps you. It keep it makes everything that's alive look like it's um, sort of translucent and glowing. In fact, I might do this with the nighttime. So if there's you know, at nighttime, there's just less overall light, and then all of the trees and bushes glow. Alright, so I'm almost dead. I'll show you that in permadeath mode, it does have a. So I can't continue or whatever. It should show jib on there. We add that to the ideas. No, maybe not. Yeah, it would look weird with him alive and you're dead. Big Mac Dev, what's up? Yeah, yeah, I've been um, good for you being more productive. Yeah, I've been on vacation anyway, so um, not much has changed. Not much has changed at all. I just got back from vacation, so really all has changed is some some art. Yeah, that cave with the low entry. That's a um, that's an exploded cave, so. Or a, a secret that's been opened up. So um, when you save your game, or when the game saves, it auto saves itself, and you've blown up a secret, it also saves the fact that you've been to that secret, or that it's open. So the next time you run the game, it's going to be open. But if there's not, if the secret is currently not open, like I know there's one over here. I think let's use the. Yeah, there's one right there. <laughs> so yeah, most of these are full of just random diamonds right now. This is really not done. But yeah, so this whole area should look a lot better and I'll have something else in here and whatever. But yeah, I just, I, it's basic concept of secrets. Right. Um, yeah, I want to draw. Next thing I want to draw is some um, some more grass and stuff for the for the lily pads. And I'm gonna take a quick little break before I do that.
All right, I guess the first thing we'll try is adding some lotus flowery type stuff straight into the lily pads. There. So Pac-Man. All right, um, let's add another layer and work on that. All right, so let's see what this one lily pad, lily pad looks like with that on it. Actually, let's drop some more stuff too. I want to see some, maybe some cattails coming off of this stuff. All right, let's see what that looks like. We've got two different things here we're trying. Uh, be fat, uh, yeah, this is a totally solo game. Yep, good question. Yeah, I do everything. I do the, the art, I do the code, I do the music, I do the sound, I do the business. It's a total solo project, and it's, it's basically I've, I've gotten to the point in life where I've developed enough of these skills that I can do this. You know, it's because I've been doing game development for 20 years now. I've had my experience with mostly programming and music and sound and all that. Mostly programming, actually. And then, yeah, recently in the last few years, I've developed, I've just learned how to do art. You know, I got a, I got a pad and was able to start doing art. And I'm like, wow, I can actually do all of game development now. So um, this is my first game doing it. All of it. So I really like it. It's really fun to be able to do whatever I want. You know, if I decide that I want to do some weird game, whatever I want to do, I can do, you know. That's a really freeing, creative feeling to be able to do whatever. Here we go. Lily pads. Nah, some of them are flipped. I forgot that. Some of them are Y flipped. Let's 
works okay. The ones that aren't flipped, of course. Yeah, I guess if that flower looked more lotusy and the grass worked a little better, it'd be okay. So yeah, I'm gonna do these separate from separate from the lily pads. That way I can flip a lily pad over but keep the the grass or whatever the same. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, my reasons are I, I've definitely thought this through a lot. Um, I mostly develop games with um, Cocos 2DX in Xcode C++ because it's an open source engine mainly. You know, Cocos 2DX is a great open source engine, and um, what that means is if, if I like, for example, look at this stuff. I can custom do everything, even the way my window starts up. This is starting up a window, a full screen, windowed mode window. Check it out. I can Alt Tab out of this. So what I mean, I can do sick stuff like this, little things like this. I can optimize all the performance of my engine to the T, every little bit of it. Um, I can change everything. And when you're using something like Unreal and Unity, these are great engines, especially for if you want to do 3D, and especially if you're if you're new to game development, it's a good place to start. Unity, Unreal, these are great engines, um, but they don't quite have the amount of flexibility that you do when you're doing everything in a C++ based game engine. And besides, I don't need 3D. This is a 2D game, it's a retro game. So, yeah, some of those lily pads might be a little bit too big. Uh, Code Monkey, yeah, with Mono Game, it's the same kind of thing. Um, but Mono Game is, uh, is the other great thing about Coco Studio X is it's cross platform. Mono Game is not quite as cross platform, unless I'm wrong. I don't know. Last time I checked about Mono Game, it wasn't as cross-platform as that friendly as it as it, as it sounds you know what I mean so um, I know mono game is sort of cross-platform but Coco Studio X is really cross-platform it goes iOS Android Windows Mac Linux Blackberry like all these different all these different platforms you can export with the same C++ code and besides mono game is also C sharp and I'm not I uh, I do think C sharp is a great language but it's C++ is even more portable, um, supported on different platforms, and fast. It's faster than C Sharp as well. So yeah, there's a lot of reasons to go with C++, and there's a lot of reasons to go with an open source engine. And there's a lot. There's just as many reasons to not go with the same kind of engine. So it all depends on what kind of game you want to make. Wow, are you are you reading from the Coco Studio X? Because I I never I didn't know they're officially supporting PlayStation Four now. That's awesome. I know they were about to. Did they finally release a new version? Oh, it's still three six. Oh, that's Mono Game. Oh. Oh, cool. So, yeah, it sounds like they really have improved that since I last checked. But, yeah, I'm already um, I'm already quite comfortable with C++. So, I, I, would, never, I would never switch away from that. Um, because I believe, you know, once you learn, once you take the time to learn one language, one game engine, that is a lot of work in itself. You know what I mean? That could take you six months to a year to really get familiar with the game engine enough to write a, a professional quality game so um, I believe you know once you once you've learned an engine and you know it has what you need to create your game there's really no reason to switch is it 3.7? They, they, I think they're working on 3.7 but according to what I just I just checked and it was they announced it on the forum? wow maybe they forgot to update their their download page then C++ is fun, that's right. Azenrich probably has the the best C++ skills of anybody in this chat room right now. I would bet. I would bet that. Yeah, cool, man. Yeah, that's awesome. See, you're familiar with C-sharp, 
Mono game is a great choice for you. You know, so would Unity. Unity would also be a great one. Yeah, and I think they did, yeah, recently, Melodic Melon, they did, like, update Unreal, and they released all the source code. And same with Unity. You can actually change it all. So a lot of a lot of why I started this to use this game engine is not as relevant. So, yeah, it's, but still, I don't need to use 3D. Peloe Geek, what's C++ used for? Oh, so much, man, so much. It's a programming language that is used almost everywhere in every kind of application. All right, so let's do some more grass. Yeah, so this big circle one might actually be too big here. Let's get um let's get this grass. Oh, that is one problem with this. Nice. That's pretty amazing. I've seen some of that language. Crazy. All right, what's so great about this custom bit of lily pad right here? Maybe I shouldn't flip them on the Y. Let's try not flipping the Y. That would make this a lot easier. So there's this function here, create lily pads. There it is. Sometimes it flips the Y. Let's not do that. And let's shrink this super big one. This one is, did I forget to, to move that or something? Yeah, this one too. It's Pac-Man one. <laughs> this one's super Pac-Man. Height, two sixty-one. Ah, sixty-one. It's too much. And I want these all to be centered too. So I'm gonna turn on these again. That's crazy. Yeah, that's what you're just you're just saying. Yeah, I'm still on three six. Um, I use Rapid Game, which is a little tool I wrote, which pre-compiles Coco Studio X. And um, yeah, I've been waiting for three seven to come out. Look at that, 3.7. Yeah, they still haven't updated their page about it. Maybe there's, is there a 3.7 alpha or something? Where's the change log? Yeah, be fat. I would definitely recommend Visual Studio on Windows. That's the only one I really know. You know, I'm sorry, but uh, there's also the other great ones by JetBrains, and there's also uh, Microsoft has a new one called 
uh, something code. Oh, it is RC0. Nice. Yeah, Torque2D, yeah. Oh, cool. So, oh, they have, they have RC0, Beta0, and RC1. Nice. Yeah, that's probably why they haven't updated their page, because they haven't officially finished 3.7 yet. It's nice to let them finish, that's for sure. I've noticed, like, pretty much every time, there's there's definitely some bugs they work through. Where's there? There it is, change log. Nice. Cool. This is great. Exciting news to know that they're they're about to release. That was July 14th. That was July 1st. Yeah, look at all those fixes. Cool. Nice. Good to know. I'll be watching that. Yeah, yeah, totally, man. Slow excellence. Uh, that's a. It's good that you noticed that. Um, you have a good artistic eye there. Um, a lot of games are are kind of going in that style these days, so it's kind of a style these days. And I'm not sure. I'm not. I'm not sure who even started it at all. But there's so many games that are pixel art, sort of Super Brothers esque. If you look at like so many. Oh man. There's Crawl. If you've seen Crawl, Crawl is an awesome game. <clears throat> There's um, Children of Morta. That's an awesome pixel art game. But yeah, there's there's like so many pixel art games these days, and they're all they're all kind of like stepping up the level of quality too. It's really nice to see each one. It's nice to see this blend too. This blend of 8-bit style pixels with like 32-bit art, 32-bit colors, you know what I mean? So, what's up, Tavin? Nice. What's this? Is this a game you're working on? What's up, Nyx? Yeah, I'm doing good, man. Just working on some art and stuff. Uh, no, I haven't heard of Elysian Shadows. What's that? Yeah, good for you, Code Monkey. That's awesome. So cool. I love seeing that. All right, let's see what that looks like now with a little bit more refined lily pads and never flipping them on the Y so that it's going to be easier to do some, some animations for them, make their make them look really cool and alive. Maybe even shift back and forth a little. Yeah, already that's looking so, so good. Seeing... Um, 
seeing just a little bit of like grass and stuff on the glue pads. So now I can animate them. Yeah, networking, right? Yeah, I wrote a I wrote a multiplayer game. It was the hardest thing I ever did. Um, yeah, real time multiplayer is crazy hard, isn't it? Even with a good library, I mean, you go get yourself a good library to start with, and even then, you've got all oh, so much work to do. Oh, it's on Kickstarter, huh? Oh, this is from last year? Cool, man. Yeah, I'll check this out later on. I'll have to look up their um, Kickstarter and stuff, see how they did. Yeah, the frogs the frogs already do have a sound and I now just need to add the actual frogs. So Hey, what's up, Freddy Fish? Yeah, it has been a long time. It's going great, man. I'm working on the, the game right now, the visuals and stuff. So I just got these lily pads drawn so that they're some of the lily pads have a little bit of grass on them, some of them have little flowery type stuff, and I'm gonna draw the flowers a little better and I'm about to animate it all so I can take these existing tiles and duplicate everything and do a second tile uh, Freddy Fish no it's gonna be another six months it's, it's not this game Songbringer is not coming out till Probably like January, February, March, somewhere, first quarter of next year. Still a lot left to do. So I'm just duplicating this existing. Art. Nice. Yeah, it totally is. Um, you from the Kickstarter, there was um, there was alpha. There's alpha versions. There's beta versions coming out as well. So the alpha version is out. So people that supported the Kickstarter at a certain level got access. So they already they're already playing it. So people can already play Songbringer a little bit, but it's not anywhere near done. Um, and then there's also going to be two more betas. And those are coming out later on. So like another month or two will be the first beta. And then a few more months will be the second beta. And yeah, so all of that people are people can play. And you can still get access to the betas by, um, by supporting the game on songbringer.com. So songbringer.com has got like links to uh, pre-order. And then you can pre-order it. And you not only do you get your name in the credits of the game and on the main menu, but you also can get access to the, the beta and stuff. Yeah. 
yeah, I'm really, really excited about this game. It's so fun to be developing this. All right, now I just need to create some more um, slices for these lily pads. I need a slice for each frame, and then I need a slice for its animated frame or its second frame or whatever. So each one of these has two frames. So I just duplicate. So as I'm going and duplicating the layers, I'm also converting them into new layer-based slices. So they're all ready to go. All right, cool. Now I can just name them all. I'm going clockwise. All right, cool. There's the groundwork done for being able to animate the lily pads. Okay, so I'm going to start with just animating these bottom two. Right, ready to go. Okay, so these are on the same layer, those are in the same layer. I want that to look more like a like a flower, but for now I'm just going to reveal that it's animated by putting one of his dots a little bit brighter like that. 
And these, I'm going to make them kind of blow in the wind. Even though I'm making them all blow to the east, if the lily pad is flipped over on its X, it will seem like it's blowing to the west. Alright, let's do this. Ready to export all that. Actually, first let's remove the current lily pads. Save these new lily pads. Looks like I me messed up number 10. Hmm. Uh, that one's supposed to be O one. Oh, this one's supposed to be O two. No, 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 no. God, I just did all that wrong, didn't I? Okay, this one is supposed to be one, zero. This one's supposed to be two, zero. No. All these supposed to be, this would be two, one. Two, one. Goldfishes? Maybe. I've always wanted to do some kind of fish underneath the water because I think it'd be cool to draw sort of like this. It would blur a little bit, you know, and it would appear a little bit transparent. One zero. No, this is one one. Two one. Three one. There. Right, if frogs, why can't you have goldfish? Oh. Uh. Three eyed goldfish. That's a good idea. I'm always looking for ways to make things a little different. Okay, now let's try that again. Lily pad. I did four one wrong. Uh, this one's supposed to be three. You're supposed to be two. You're supposed to be one. You're supposed to be zero. Okay, one more time. I'm having trouble counting today. <laughs> yep.
You can tell I was on vacation for a while. <laughs> All right, let's see. Get status again. Yay! Okay, now when we're drawing the lily pads. We're gonna animate some wind on these guys. Alright, and we don't need R3 anymore. Yeah, Shadik the Hedgehog, yes. It's coming out on Retro VGS for sure. And um, if I can get enough funds, it's going to be on PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. First is coming out on Steam though, so Windows, Mac, Linux is the first release. That's going to be January, February, March, something like that. And then um, next release is um, iOS, and then the next release is going to be Retro VGS, and then yeah, if possible, there'll be also be Android, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One. Okay, I didn't really mean for the these guys to shift to the right, but it kind of looks all right. It looks like they're floating. Okay, the, that's really weird though. The um, the grass needs to move. The lower grass. I think it just needed that little nudge. And this is about it for today's today's stream. I'll get these these working and then I'm gonna head out, and make some dinner. So that was wrong. So yeah, now the um, now the grass moves about right. It's on the on the lily pads. <clears throat> All right, Nazareth. Yeah, thanks you guys. I want one last thing I'm gonna try before I before I go is to try and not make the lily pads move. I kind of like them moving, but. There, I'll center them up and it'll just make it so the things on top of the lily pad move. Um, we'll see how I like that though. Maybe maybe go back to having them move a little bit. It kind of gives you the feeling that maybe there's some fish underneath it that's moving it. Whoa. Oh, that was because I'm... Alright, that was supposed to be... The other way.
there. Okay, so now now the lily pads are constant and just the grass moves. I think I did like it the other way around. definitely gives it more of an alive feeling seeing them all kind of shift a little bit you get the feeling that there's like a ton of fish underneath there in fact that'll be one of the next things I should do is add some fish that swim underneath like goldfish or you know poi or I don't know something something like those kinds of fish and um, Uh, also, there's going to be some water enemies, so there'll be some sort of enemy that can come up from the water and attack you somehow. And I'll, I'll probably redraw these the little lotus flowers to look a little bit more lotus flowery. Yeah, it's a good start. Yeah, could make it a little smoother too. All right, so yeah, that's it for today's stream. Um, I'll be back tomorrow. Just getting back in the saddle here. It's my first day after vacation. So uh, yeah, anybody who just joined, this is a game. It's called Songbringer. Um, it's coming out in like January on Steam. It's also coming out on Retro VGS and stuff like that, other consoles. So uh, yeah, I'll be back tomorrow, same time, usually 4 p.m.-ish Pacific. Today I did early. I did 2 p.m. Pacific. So sometimes I do two, sometimes I do four, sometimes I do five. It's best to just follow um, the stream. And that's the way you can get notifications when I start. So that's it. Talk to you guys later.